Welcome to Story Station, episode 24. In this episode, you can listen to two Egyptian stories. The first story is titled, Sniff, 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 I Need a Whiff. Listen to this silly tale about a silly elephant named Omar and his journey to find some peanuts. The second story is titled, Fishing with Father. This is a very descriptive story about Kalan's day of fun, fishing with his father. Hope you enjoy it! I'll read a story called, Sniff, 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 I Need a Whiff. Sniff, 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 I Need a Whiff. Omar the elephant chanted as he walked through the tall grass, his long trunk dangling down, sniffing the ground. Omar loved to eat peanuts, but they grew under the ground so he had to sniff them out. All day long, he walked around, sniffing the ground and chanting. Some of the other animals nearby thought Omar looked awfully silly. Sharif, the rhinoceros, started laughing when Omar walked by him. Omar didn't even see the Sharif. He was way too busy sniffing. Sharif laughed even harder when he heard him chant, Sniff, 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 sniff. I need a whiff. He dropped his heavy body to the ground and rolled around laughing hard. Rashid, the giraffe, saw Omar coming. His neck was so long that he could see things that were a long distance away. What is that silly elephant doing? He said out loud to himself as he reached for a few leaves from a tree that he was standing next to. It looks like he's sniffing the ground. Rashid started laughing. The closer Omar got, the harder Rashid laughed. Silly elephant, he giggled. When Rashid heard Omar chanting and sniffing, he laughed even harder. His long neck bobbed up and down as he heard. Sniff, 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 sniff. I need a whiff. Omar didn't even notice Rashid as he was too busy sniffing for peanuts. Mohammed, the lion, Cub was playing with his brother, Ashir. They were wrestling about in the bushes when they heard Omar chanting, Sniff, 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 sniff. I need a whiff. They stopped and sat up, their little cub ears standing straight up in the air. What is Omar doing? Mohammed asked. It looks like he's sniffing the ground, Ashir replied. But what's he singing? The curious cub wondered. They ran up closer to Omar and followed him from a safe distance. He's sniffing the ground. Why do you think he's doing that? Mohammed asked. I don't know, Ashir answered, then pounced on his brother, tugging at the nape of his neck, where one day a thick mane would grow. Losing interest in Omar, the two continued their wrestling and fighting games. Omar hadn't even noticed the two lion cubs, He'd been too busy sniffing for peanuts. As he walked past Fatima, the flamingo, he began to sniff the faintest aroma of peanuts. Sniff, 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 sniff. I need a whiff, he mumbled. Fatima stopped preening her feathers and watched Omar. She started chuckling. It wasn't every day that you saw a huge gray elephant walking by and sniffing the ground. The more she watched, the more she laughed. She laughed so hard that one of her pink feathers flew up into the air and floated slowly down onto the grass by her long, spindly legs. Omar didn't even notice Fatima. He was too busy sniffing for the peanuts. He began to get very excited. He knew there were peanuts nearby. He could smell them. He began to run. His long, ivory tusks jutted out from the side of his face. His trunk-like legs thudded in the ground as he ran. His huge flapping ears bounced up and down against his back. Suddenly, he stopped. His trunk sniffed the ground over and over again. Peanuts, he cried out. He used his sharp tusks to dig up the ground, tugged the green plant on top, and pulled it with his trunk. Soon, the roots came free. Attached to them were clusters of peanuts in their shells. Yes, peanuts, he cried with delight. 
Omar picked all the peanuts off of his tr trunk and gobbled them down. They were delicious. He was happy. It didn't matter that Sharif the rhino had laughed, or that Fatima the flamingo had laughed, or Rashid the giraffe, or Mohammed or an osher. The two lion cubs had laughed. It didn't matter, because he had his peanuts, and they were delicious. The end. I hope you liked the story. The next story begins in a moment. I will read a story called Fishing with Father. Halan loved to go fishing with his father. They would find a place along the banks of the river and sit down. Father always brought a basket of food for them to eat while waiting for the fish to bite. One morning, Kalan's father woke him up very early in the morning. The sun hadn't even begun to rise yet. Come, son, it's time to go, he said. Kalan jumped out of bed, suddenly wide awake. Good father, I can't wait. While his father gathered the fishing tackle, Kalan brushed his dark brown hair, put on his clothes and his socks and his shoes. He met his father outside. Together, they headed for the river. See those stars up there, his father asked, pointing to a cluster of bright, twinkling stars. That is Orion. See his belt and his sword? Kahlan looked. He thought he saw it. He did see some beautiful stars. Why are there so many stars, father? He asked. Are there as many as fish in the Nile River as there are stars in the sky? Oh no, son, not near as many. The stars in the sky are more than the grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. Aren't they beautiful? He asked. When I was a boy, I lived in the desert, in a tent made of goat and camel hair. There were no lights like there are here in the city. It was black as coal, and the stars were thick in the heavens. I would lie awake for hours, gazing at them, wondering why they were all there. There are a lot of them, father. I hope there are a lot of fish for us to catch, Kahlan smiled. They walked silently the rest of the way. Already they could hear the morning rush hour traffic off in the distance. Lights from the houses were turning on, one at a time, as their occupants rose. Dogs began to bark and roosters crowed. By the time they reached the riverbank, the sun was coming over the horizon. It looks like strands of shimmering gold, doesn't Kalan? his father asked. Kalan stood and watched it. Finally, he had to cover his eyes as it was so bright. He knew that it would soon be blazing and get very hot. He was glad that he was at the river. He could swim if it got too hot. Father handed Kalan his fishing pole. They tossed them into the river and sat down on the muddy bank. Father had brought an old blanket to sit on, as the mud was very black and stained their clothing. They sat there, watching as the river came to life. Several barges sailed by. Some were carrying fruit, other stones, and still others carried beautiful, colorful flowers. Birds started flying about, some landing in the water, bobbing up and down on the small waves. Their heads went underwater now and then searching for a breakfast of fish, perhaps Nile perch. Look, Kalan, father said, pointing across the river. There's a crocodile. It's after that bird. Kalan watched the crocodile slink into the water and swim towards the bathing heron. Its tail switched back and forth as it moved silently. Just as it got near the bird, the heron flew off into the air. The crocodile sat there still for several moments, then went underwater and out of their sight. I hope that the crocodile doesn't feel like eating us for breakfast, Kahlan said, rather afraid. Don't worry, son. He'd much rather eat some fish, or perhaps some rats crawling along the bank. Just then, Kahlan's pole began to jiggle. I've got a fish, father! I've got a fish! He was so excited. He pulled and started winding in his fishing line. It must be a big one, he cried out. 
Soon, a large, silvery fish was floundering on the blanket next to his father. I've got it, he said, grabbing the wriggling fish in his hands. Come on, open the basket and I'll throw it in, father said. Cahuan lifted the lid, and his father tossed the fish inside. After a few hours, there was a dozen fish in the basket. Cahuan and his father sat munching away on ripe, sticky dates, some pita bread that had made, been made fresh the night before, some goat cheese, and some grapes. Well, son, I think we should get these fish home before they spoil, father said. I can't wait to eat one for dinner tonight, Kahlan said, his mouth drooling with anticipation. That night, Kahlan's mother fried the fish. She boiled some rice and couscous. She chopped up some eggplant and cucumber and added them to the couscous. For dessert, she mixed pistachio nuts with honey and butter and let it harden. This is the best fish I've ever tasted, Kahlan said. That's because I caught it myself. He'd never been prouder and never had a nicer day. Today, fishing with his father. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.